called circling. You're going to want to start with just kind of a light circular motion. You're not drawing circles. It's more of just a light repetitive circular motion and, and uh, you want to kind of just barely touch the paper. So right now I'm just layering on a little bit here just to kind of get a nice gray scale across the entire form. this point I would want to begin building up my shadows uh, and my highlights so if my light source is coming from this direction then my highlights are going to be here on my form I can see where the highlight is going to hit so I'll erase that kind of just add, add that highlight spot in and then on the opposite side of the object from the highlight will be my shadow now, the shadow won't touch this wall exactly. It'll be inside the form a little bit. Um, and the reasoning for that is because of the reflective light on the surface of the table that our object is sitting on. So shadows, just to kind of roughly sketch that in, will, will be more inside the shape and, and there will be a little lighter area between the dark shadow and the edge of the object. Now that I've built that shadow area up, I can start to blend these two together. Now the, the circling method, I just lightly press between. No, I'm not pressing very hard right now. This is very light pressure just to build it up slowly. And if there's any area that I may have done too much in, I can lift with my eraser. You can gently erase. You don't need to push very hard. Circle erasing works well too. To blend it, if I want to smooth it out, paper towels are great because they're strong. I like to fold it twice just to get a sharper edge. Stick your pencil in there so that it meets the very end. And then start folding it at an angle. You can make yourself a little blending stick that way. And I can circle blend this as well. As I'm blending it, um, it's actually going to get a lot darker. So not to worry at this point. Um, I'll, just, I'll just layer on more graphite and repeat the blending process. I can lift the highlight again and then repeat the blending. Mm -hmm. This next one, we are going to look at another technique of cross hatching. We'll be doing a contour hatch, that's a hatch that follows the form. Um, so, as I begin to hatch my, my layers in. I may use lines that break to indicate um, where the light is hitting. I'm just repeating another layer of contour circles. I've got two layers. I'm going to go ahead and build another one. You may notice I'm holding my pencil way back at the eraser. This is allowing me to um, practice being a little more fluid. Notice I'm using the side of my pencil rather than the, the point. That way I'm getting a soft layer. Now I'm going to begin to repeat um, the contour circular motion in 
the areas where the shadow needs to be. Again, keeping it a little lighter near the bottom and concentrating that shadow in a little more towards the center. And as I build up towards that highlight, try to leave that highlight area alone. I can still see some of that texture in the paper below. Um, and I can still go in just like before and build up that value, focusing on the form of the shape with my lines. I'm gonna do the same thing with my eraser. I'm gonna follow the contour of my form and lift with my eraser. Where I've really smudged and layered, um, it's becoming difficult to lift, so I may even have to clean on a separate piece of paper my, my eraser, see how I can get all that graphite off of it now. And once I do that, it's a little easier to lift and erase. So every once in a while, especially if you're building up graphite like this, you're gonna wanna stop and, yeah, look how quick that built up. You're going to want to stop and clean your eraser. See, isn't that beginning to develop a nice texture? a medium amount of value there. Again, let me look at where this highlight's coming from. And I can lift using an eraser um, to lift that highlight out. subtractive model, especially when you're working in a large area, is that it allows me to build up the gray value, which is 90% of this thing, quickly. So it's a fast way to layer in shadows and imagine the placement of highlights. And it's easily um, adaptable. If I don't like how my highlights and shadows are looking, I can smudge and kind of start over. been working on creating contrast between different areas of this sphere, the background, and the shadow. So for example, I'm keeping this uh, reflective light highlight a little lighter so that it really contrasts well with this dark shadow. I want to think about keeping the gray of the background um, 
uh, to be either a few degrees lighter or darker than the gray in the sphere next to it so that they stand apart. I will show you in the background here how I build up this layer of graphite in the large area of work. Um, but for now, let's kind of move on to how to build up these shadows and fine tune our, our spheres on this guy and this guy here. Decide where a shadow should go. You're gonna go back to where the light source is. This light source, um, if I take my pencil and I shine it through the highlight, where the sphere hits the ground will be the starting point of my shadow and I can lightly sketch that. I want a parallel line. Um, parallel lines are lines that always run the same direction. So I want a parallel line that is parallel to the top of my table here. And then I'm going to find where the sphere, bottom of the sphere meets the, the table again. I'm going to go ahead and do that to this guy as well. Now I can go ahead and darken those in. And uh, I'm going to actually put this between me and my paper so that I don't smudge this area with my wrist when I'm working on this. <laughs> refining the sphere at this point. Uh, I'm going to start by building up the value in the background here. I think I'm going to um, just darken it a little bit more in this area. To do that, I'm going to layer graphite, and this is how I created the value that's already on the background. Again, you're going to need a sharp pencil with a good amount of um, graphite lead. You're going to want to hold it so that the lead is flat on the page. And you're going to want to put a very light layer. So you can go over multiple times if you want to build it up. You can lightly repeat that. Push that right up to the sphere. And I'm going to go ahead and blend that in. contrast, I want the uh, areas that are low contrast to be high contrast. So here's a really low contrast area is right here where the edge of the sphere is the same gray or very close to the same gray as the gray in the background. The sphere does not pop out because of this low contrast. This is high contrast. I've got a dark edge next to a light edge. So I'm essentially going to do that here. I can either darken the side of my, inside of my sphere or darken around the sphere. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, darken around the sphere here a little bit more. So I'm going to continue to layer up with my graphite. sphere just a little bit. I'm going to lighten that reflective light a little bit more here as well. can be very visually interesting to viewers. I'm going to quickly fine tune this form here. Okay, so I've quickly given um, each of these areas some more definition. Let's look at quickly adding value to the, the space above. I want to start to build up these really quick areas, very, very lightly. I'm not drawing into the areas I've already worked on either. Just looking around them. 
tackling small sections at a time, trying not to overlap too much. And smudge and blend it in. I can repeat this process a couple times if I want to build up value. Um, and going different directions will also help me to cover areas that I don't want to, like cover up other marks that I maybe don't want to see. <laughs> to create contrast. Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I hope all of you are safe and well.